Starting in March of 2023, sea surface temperatures both in the North Atlantic and globally have reached record high values. We don't know for sure yet exactly why this is happening, but in this video we will examine some of the factors that appear to be contributing to these unusually high temperatures. First, a little background. This graph from the University of Maine Climate Reanalyzer shows the results of satellite measurements of the sea surface temperatures in the North Atlantic Ocean taken over the past 40 years. The short dashed line shows the average of the data obtained between 1982 and 2011, while the two long dashed lines represent this average plus or minus two standard deviations. Those of you who have studied statistics may remember that the two standard deviation limits correspond to the 95% confidence level. As you can see, nearly all the yearly data lie between the two standard deviation limits, which is an indication that sea surface temperatures in the North Atlantic have been quite stable until recently. In fact, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change sixth assessment released in 2022 noted that the North Atlantic Ocean had been warming more slowly than the global average for all the oceans, and it may have even cooled a little. The relatively tight bunching of the annual sea surface temperature values for the North Atlantic until quite recently definitely is in line with that assessment. That makes the sea surface temperature values that have been recorded in the North Atlantic this year even more surprising. By the beginning of August of 2023, North Atlantic sea surface temperatures had risen to 25 degrees centigrade or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. That is about four standard deviations above the 1982 to 2011 mean. Clearly something or some things have changed to drastically speed up warming in the North Atlantic Ocean. This chart, also from the University of Maine Climate Reanalyzer, shows the sea surface temperature for the entire world, except for the Arctic and Antarctic regions. The short dashed line and the two long dashed lines in this chart have the same meaning as in the previous chart. However, the global sea surface temperature picture is considerably different from what we saw in the North Atlantic. Sea surface temperatures for the ocean as a whole have been far less stable and they show clear evidence of warming during the past decade that is consistent with the fact that the oceans have been absorbing a substantial fraction of the excess heat caused by the increase of greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere. But even with that in mind, the net warming that began in March of 2023 is well outside the range of warming that the oceans have experienced in the past decade or so. Clearly, there must be one or more new factors that are contributing to the recent rapid rise in ocean surface temperatures. We know that the worldwide emission of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases has continued to increase unabated since the start of the Industrial Revolution, and that this increase in greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere has contributed to rising global temperatures. We also know that a large fraction of this excess heat has been absorbed by the world's ocean. So that certainly is one of the factors contributing to the increase in sea surface temperatures. However, the rapid rise in sea surface temperatures that began in March of this year suggests that additional factors are contributing to the observed near surface heating. Climate scientists point to several additional possible contributors to the observed fast rise in sea surface temperatures. One is the recent requirement by the International Maritime Organization that ships switch to low sulfur fuel, along with recent major reductions in sulfate particulates from land-based sources in parts of Europe. 
A second factor is the return to El Nino conditions in the tropical eastern Pacific Ocean, as well as other major shifts in weather conditions, such as changes in wind patterns leading to reduced amounts of dust particles over the North Atlantic. A third factor is a relative lack of significant volcanic activity in the past few years. A fourth factor is a recent increase in solar activity. And a fifth factor is wildfires and agricultural burning. The reduction in the emission of sulfate particulates from ships and stationary sources leads to less cloud formation so more sunlight reaches the surface of the oceans. The recent return of El Nino conditions in the Pacific Ocean leads to increased temperatures in the tropics that help to warm ocean waters, while recent changes in wind patterns have led to much less dust in the atmosphere over the Atlantic Ocean. The reduction in major volcanic activity in recent years also has reduced the number of particulates in the atmosphere over the world's oceans, allowing more sunlight to reach ocean surfaces. We also know that the current maximum in the 11 year solar cycle is somewhat stronger than in the recent past, leading to a bit more solar energy reaching the earth. This also contributes to warming the surface of the earth including the 70% of the surface that the oceans comprise. And in addition to all these factors that contribute, that can contribute to ocean warming, recently there has been a very large number of wildfires in Canada. And we know that wildfires and agricultural burning contribute additional CO2 to the atmosphere, as well as black and brown particulates. The black and brown particulates in the atmosphere contribute to warming by making the color of clouds darker, causing the clouds to reflect less of the incoming sunlight. Climate scientists have been using atmospheric modeling techniques to try to determine if the contributions from all of these different factors are sufficient to account for the observed rapid warming of the world's oceans. However, with so many different factors that need to be accounted for, this can be a real challenge. In addition to the recent substantial increases in sea surface temperatures of the world's oceans between 60 degrees south latitude and 60 degrees north latitude, there also has been an unprecedented loss of sea ice in Antarctica indicating that there has been substantial warming of the Southern Ocean. Since this coincides in time with rising sea surface temperatures elsewhere, it's likely that some of the same factors that have contributed to sea surface temperature increases elsewhere are responsible for the decrease in Antarctic sea ice. This is interesting because it may be easier for climate scientists to model this event. The Southern Ocean is far from major shipping lanes as well as from regions of the Earth where major wildfires have been taking place. In addition, the largest percentage decline in Antarctic sea ice is occurring as the region heads into the Antarctic winter, so the contribution from variations in solar output are likely to be small. So with fewer different factors contributing to the warming of the Southern Ocean, it may be possible to determine more accurately how much each of the remaining factors contributes to sea surface warming. To summarize, it's clear that we are still a long way from understanding why sea surface temperatures have risen so rapidly this year. We don't know if sea surface temperature will continue to rise at this rapid rate over the long term. However, the planet already is experiencing the consequences of this rapid rise in sea surface temperatures in the, in the form of more frequent marine heat waves and extreme weather events because of higher moisture levels in the atmosphere. Earlier this year, I posted a video that discussed the consequences 
of rising sea surface temperatures in detail and another video that discussed the consequences of the loss of Antarctic sea ice. And last year, I also posted a video that describes the contribution of black and brown carbon emission to global warming. The links to those three videos are included in the description for the current video. Even though many questions remain, I hope that you have found this video informative. Please post any questions that you may have in the comments section, and I will do my best to answer them. And if you haven't already done so, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.